Hey everyone, I'm very excited today to talk to you about Kubernetes, Kata, and Azure Functions. I'm Jeff Holland. We're going to walk you through what Kubernetes is, how you can bring in new serverless capabilities to Kubernetes using things like virtual nodes, and the brand new open source Kata project, which unlock running things like Azure Functions directly on any Kubernetes cluster. So let's jump into it. I know some of you here might be newer to Kubernetes. You might be newer to Azure Functions. So we're going to spend a little bit just covering both. And then I'll show you a quick demo of using it all in action. So to start with, let's talk about Kubernetes. Let's think about building an application. So I want to build an app. Maybe it's a shopping app. I'm going to have something like a shopping cart. Maybe I'll have a database on the back end. I'm going to have some logic that needs to run, like whenever somebody tries to process an order. That's all going to make up my app, each of those individual components. And as I might think about, how do I take this app, make it cloud native, have it run at scale in the cloud, it's very likely that I'm going to be running across a number of different servers, a lot of different infrastructure in the cloud. So that if I have a peak in demand, my website's getting a lot of traffic, I might need more resources, more machines that are powering that aspect of my app. Now what Kubernetes is in a very simple way is this nice interface, a set of APIs where I can take my app, I can containerize it, publish it to Kubernetes, and Kubernetes is going to take care of managing to make sure that my app and the resources that it needs are distributed cleanly across my available infrastructure. So here you'll see we have this concept of nodes. This is often like a server running in the cloud, maybe even on premises. And I'm going to have my app running and Kubernetes is seeing like, oh, hey, there's a lot of people hitting your website right now. We might need to scale this out or replicate it across a few more of instances. Now, one nice thing about Azure Kubernetes service is that in just a few clicks, Anybody can get a fully powered Kubernetes service up and running. And for things like this master that are doing some of the orchestration, that's actually fully managed for you. So you don't even have to worry about it. But it's not quite serverless. There's still a lot here that your teams and organization need to be aware of. First and foremost, I'm running on these nodes. I need to make sure I have enough of these nodes available. If it's something like Black Friday and I get a massive burst in traffic on my website, what if I need more than these, in this case, six nodes to keep scaling out? So that's where concepts like virtual nodes come in. Now, virtual nodes are serverless nodes. This is a capability that you can build and add to any Azure Kubernetes cluster. This is generally available today. We're very excited to announce. And what this enables is that now as my app needs to run and scale, let's say it needs to go beyond my allocated nodes. It can actually run on virtual serverless containers. So if my website's getting a lot of traffic and it needs more resources than are available in my node, rather than having to spin up and instantiate an entire virtual machine and add that to the cluster, it's just going to spin up these serverless containers, all powered by Azure container instances, so that my cluster really has unlimited scale. And it can scale just for those containers that need it. So this is a really powerful capability, and it brings this concept of serverless infrastructure. Hey, I'm only getting these containers when I need them. I only pay for them while they're running. Once I'm done, once that traffic slows down, we're going to throw away those serverless containers. Your bill for those serverless containers stops, and you're back and running in your steady state. So this is a really powerful feature, brings some of the capabilities of serverless. But there are some pieces still that this is missing when we look at the full serverless story. So let's think about something like Azure Functions, which is a fully managed serverless service. Well, with Azure Functions, it works a little bit differently. Instead of giving it necessarily your container, you can give it your code written in the Azure Functions runtime with the Azure Functions programming model. You publish that bit of, bit to, uh, you, you publish that bit of code to the cloud, and it's run and scaled and managed all for you. Now, the way that that scale works in Azure Functions is that it's fully event-driven. That means that I might run a little bit of code and say, hey, run this code whenever somebody drops an item in my shopping cart. You publish that to Azure Functions. The Azure Function service is listening and looking at your shopping cart events. If an event pops up, it's going to scale up something in your app to run that little bit of code. Then it scales back down to zero. In Azure Functions, you only pay when your code is actually running. So this is nice, fully managed serverless offering. So the one aspect we talked about before, this kind of serverless infrastructure that you can bring into Kubernetes with virtual nodes is nice. But what about the event-driven aspect? What if I want to write these powerful event-driven apps where really I just want to write simple bits of code like, hey, run this whenever somebody drops something in my shopping cart. How can I bring that to Kubernetes? Because one of the aspects of virtual nodes and Kubernetes in general is that generally it's scaling just based on things like CPU and memory. 
it has no knowledge of your event source. It doesn't really know if there's a lot of people adding things into a shopping cart or not. It's just trying to guess based on CPU and memory. Now that's where this new project Kata comes in. Kata is a Kubernetes-based event-driven auto-scaling component that can be installed to any Kubernetes cluster. The Azure Kubernetes service, your own on-premises service. We've even partnered with Red Hat so that you can run this on Red Hat OpenShift. Now what Kata brings is the knowledge of your events and the ability to write event-driven containers and scale them the same way that your Azure Functions scale in the cloud. Meaning that you can write a container and say, hey, run this whenever somebody drops something on my shopping cart. Kata is actively monitoring that shopping cart. If a million people drop a million stuff in their shopping cart, it's going to be able to proactively scale, even before CPU and memory are impacted. So this is a powerful new capability that really brings the power and richness of event-driven more cleanly into Kubernetes. So this works seamlessly with Azure Function apps today. You can take any Azure Function app written in any tool that we provide. You can now publish it to Kubernetes, and those functions will scale and behave the same way they do in the Azure Function service. So this gives developers, teams, and organizations the productivity of Azure Functions, but they get the flexibility and the freedom to choose exactly where and how they host it. Maybe you want to take advantage of the full power of the Azure Function Service. I don't want to worry about any of this. That's great. You can publish to the Azure Function Service. But maybe you're running some of these functions on-premises, on the edge, or you want them to run alongside your existing service mesh or Kubernetes uh, investments. You can do that now, too, without changing the code at all. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to do a demo of using Azure Functions, running them in Kubernetes, leveraging the powerful new capabilities that Kata brings. So to start with, let's switch over here. I've got Visual Studio Code open. In just a second, we're going to create a function. Actually, we'll go ahead and do that now. So using the Visual Studio Code uh, extension for Azure Functions, I have this nice interface where I can go ahead and create a brand new function project. We'll call this MyQ function. And I have a number of different languages that I could choose here. I'm just going to go ahead and choose Python and a number of different event sources that we support as well. Now today, Kata supports Azure Queues. It also supports Azure Service Bus and HTTP, as well as Event Grid, Cloud Events, and Kafka. Uh, I'm going to choose a queue trigger right here, just to keep it simple. We'll call it our queue triggered function. I'm going to create a setting for my connection string. So I'm going to use this storage account. This is the storage account that it's going to be listening to, saying, hey, watch for new uh, items. I've got a queue here called queue. And we'll just open it in the current window. So I just set up a simple function here, a few clicks to say, hey, listen on this storage account to this queue called queue. And now Azure Functions and this tooling in VS Code have set everything up for me. So let's go ahead and select a storage account to keep our function app code and data. I'll just use the same one for simplicity's sake. And this is it. This is all the code that I need to get started with. This is event driven. I've said, hey, the event I care about is a queue message. Right now, it's only eight lines of code because I haven't written much here, but I could now write whatever Python script I want to to say, hey, do this whenever a message gets dropped in the queue. Visual Studio Code's already set up for me things like the function.json file, letting me know the queue name, telling me where I can find the connection string for that queue. I've even got similar stuff set up in my local settings JSON that have the actual connection string and keys here. Now, one of the great things about Azure Functions is that I get powerful capabilities like local debugging. I can take advantage of that too, even when I'm running these functions in Kubernetes. So let's go ahead and set a breakpoint here. I'm going to choose to run this function. This is going to spin up on my machine the Azure Functions runtime. This is completely open source, all on GitHub, and now it's running on my actual box so that I can debug and see exactly how this is going to behave even when I publish it to the cloud. So it's listening now to the queue message. This is that storage account that I have it listening to. This is actually the same queue. And just right here in the Azure portal, let's just add a queue message. Let's say hello, push OK. And as soon as I do that, switch back over here to Visual Code, you'll see my breakpoint got hit. I could step through, debug, and see exactly what's happening here. That same rich Azure Functions development experience that I wanted now working here. Now, moving forward, I could go ahead, let's stop this session. I could take this function right now and publish it directly to the Azure Function Service. It's going to listen onto that queue and scale dynamically for me. But with Kata, I can now actually run this in Kubernetes as well. So how this works, let me open up a terminal. The first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that I have Kata installed on my Kubernetes cluster. So in the Azure Function CLI tooling, we actually give you this new option called Funk Kubernetes. 
there's an option here, just install, where I can install Kata and its supporting components into my Kubernetes cluster. So when I click OK to install that here, it's going to go install Kata, make sure that that's all running on my cluster already. And so now on my cluster, let's actually go ahead and look that out. Now I have running in my Kata namespace. Here's that service controller. It's going to be listening. It has uh, knowledge of those event sources. I also have some other components here that enable HTTP scaling to zero. So that's all ready to go for us now. Now coming back to my function project, now that my cluster is ready to go, now to do that, it's actually pretty easy. Let's come back over here to this project. And let's make sure that we have a Docker file because each one of these containers is going to be in a Docker file. Now, I don't have one right now, but it's actually really easy to set up. Yet, just using the command tools, I can just come in here and say func init docker only. It's going to ask me the language that I'm using. So I'll say Python because this is a Python app. And here, just automatically for me, it's gone ahead and created a Docker file. This is pre-provisioned. It's everything I need to get up and running. So now that I've got the Docker file, I can run the command to deploy it. So let's do func kubernetes deploy. I'm going to give it the name that I want it to have. I'm going to call this my Q function. This is my Docker Hub registry name. I could also use an Azure registry if I wanted to. This is Python. I'm actually going to do a dry run right now because I want to show you what it's generating behind the scenes. So I have now this deployment file. This is what the CLI generated for me because I want to tell you what it's done. First thing, it took things like my connection strings and it's converted them into Kubernetes secrets automatically for me. It set up a deployment in Kubernetes. It's told it, hey, this is the container that we're going to build for it. It's telling it things about the trigger. And I have this special property here for Kata that lets it know, hey, I want you to go listen to a Q trigger. It's called Q, and there's a secret here that has the connection string. This is what Kata uses to monitor and drive scaling for us. So that's what it's going to run for us. Now I'll actually just run the command so that you can see it work. So I'm going to say func Kubernetes deploy. This is now building my container for me. It's going to push that up to Docker Hub. And once it's up in Docker Hub, it's then going to run that deployment on my Kubernetes cluster. And in just a second here, you should be able to see in Kubernetes that that function is now there ready to go. Now what's great here is you've noticed I've just been using the regular Azure Functions tooling in Visual Studio Code. I could open an existing project. I could be doing the same thing with a project that I created in Visual Studio, IntelliJ, Eclipse, and the CLI is just going to work with it for us. So now that that's been pushed into Docker, you can see it's created this stuff in Kubernetes. Let's look at it. One of the things I want to call out here uh, is that this is now deployed my Q function. It's running right now in my Kubernetes cluster. And it's actually set up some auto-scaling rules for us as well so that it can monitor our function for us automatically. So now what I want to show is I'm going to come back over here to the portal. Let's make sure this queue is empty, which it is right now. Let's go ahead and add a message. So we'll say, hello, Kata and click OK. Kata should be aware uh, that there is now a queue message available. And if I click to get my pods, it's now spun up for me a queue function. So it's scaled this up from zero. It's given me a queue function. It's running. And if I actually refresh this, you can see it actually is it's, it's getting eaten uh, by Kata. Maybe, yep, there we go. The refreshing caching scared me a little bit. Uh, so I can say, hello, Kata2. Click OK. Uh, Kubernetes is eating it right away. Uh, so my, my Kubernetes cluster has been scaled for me automatically. So that's how easy I can get up and running. This is now listening to my cluster. Now let's do one more quick change. I'm going to change something. I want to show you how this can scale based on queue messages as well. So let's just add a little line of code here. I'm going to have this sleep whenever it processes a queue message so that I can replicate some, some high work happening. Let's sleep for five seconds. And I'm going to come in here to the host file, and I'm going to tell it, hey, for each one of these instances, I actually want you to eat one message at a time. So consume them slowly from the queue, and when you consume them, I want you to sleep for a while. So let's redeploy this to our cluster. And while we do that, I'm going to come over here to a simple console app that I have, and I'm going to push 10,000 messages to this queue that I'm now pushing uh, to my cluster. So let's go ahead here. I want to wait to make sure I have my updated properties before I do it. And what I want you to watch when I do this, I'll get you ready. If I come here to kube deploy, you'll see right now it says, hey, you only need one instance. As soon as I go and push a very high load and that event source starts getting more and more events, before the CPU and memory even peak up, Kata is going to enable this to scale out infinitely based on that event source. So that's now been updated here. Let's just run this simple little 
test that's going to push 10,000 queue messages to this queue. So we make sure that this spins up for us. It's now pushing all of those queue messages. So now that that's there, let's take a look at this happening in real time. So let's come ahead here and say get all. And you'll notice right now it's going to look at, we can actually look at the scaling rules. So here's the scaler that it's set up. Let's take a look at it. It's not yet detected the scale, that's okay. Oh, here we go, now it's seeing it. So we have 256 messages here. And so if I come here and say get deploy now, because there's so many messages, you'll notice now I'm at eight. This is gonna keep going up and up and up. So I'm at eight right now. Now it's saying, oh, I actually need 16 because my app behind the scenes is pushing more and more messages. And so very quickly, before I even have to wait for CPU and memory to pop up because Kata knows about the event source, it's quickly adding more and more instances to help out to drain that queue. So this is all managed automatically for me with Kata, with Azure Functions, and with Kubernetes. And joining it with things like the virtual node, I can get serverless infrastructure as well. All right. So now that we've seen this in action, how can each of you get started? If you want to run a similar quick start like what I just ran, you can go to aka.ms slash kata quick start, and it will give you step-by-step -step tutorial to set up the test just like I ran. If you want to learn more about AKS virtual nodes, you can learn more by following the link here, get it set up for any of your Kubernetes deployments. And if you're interested to learn more about Kata, even help contribute and make it better to bring event-driven uh, event compute to any Kubernetes cluster, you can follow the link to GitHub here as well. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching, and have a fantastic Microsoft Build 2019.